As we bring this uh, side event to a close, uh, let me say what a rich uh, set of interventions, sharing practices from all of our panelists and all of our distinguished speakers uh, today. Uh, to me, lots of things stick out. There's so much for us to digest uh, as we go forward. First, I think, is uh, it, the positive step forward that we do have this side event on protection, risks, and food insecurity uh, at the level of this humanitarian affairs segment. I think it's an important step forward, and it's an important recognition that this is indeed a global priority for ours. Uh, many of the words of our speakers today stuck out to me in terms of not only the huge opportunities before us, but also looking at preventative uh, protection strategies, uh, looking at survival as an integral part of protection, uh, keeping communities in the center, not just as subjects, but as enablers, uh, as, uh, and really a desire and a call for actionable impact on all of these areas. These are a lot of the things that, 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 that our speakers today have called uh, us to reflect on and to incorporate in our strategies uh, forward. Um, as we move forward from the Global Protection Cluster, may I just share a few areas that we are indeed interested in continuing uh, to work on together, and that is first that this be a collaborative uh, effort and a partnership uh, between food security actors and protection actors, between those who are, call, are, are called specialized or not specialized in protection or others. It is indeed a collaborative effort together, uh, both in terms of our respective models of humanitarian response and the ways that we do that on the ground particularly including specific focus on predictive and joint analysis models uh, for, uh, for addressing these issues. A second area that we are deeply interested in is incorporating existing protection risks, tools, guidance, and methods into all the sectoral programming of humanitarian action in order to develop integrated programming uh, around these, uh, the reduction of needs. Uh, the third area, as we've heard in all of the interventions today, is about the important role and the leadership of communities and local actors. We hear also the, 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 uh, the, the, the way forward on finding more flexible funding also for these types of actors as a key uh, uh, aspect of moving forward. And maybe finally, again, uh, with all of the rich interventions and statements from member states, uh, this shared commitment to systematically address protection uh, risks and food security, uh, both in terms of diplomatically, but also in all of our humanitarian programming. We know this in involves addressing both root causes, but also the impacts on the ground that we've heard loud and clear affecting both women, children, communities, and all those that are affected in crises around the world. Uh, before closing this event, let me just thank and extend my deep thanks uh, to all those that sponsored and were, had a role in, in organizing this event. That includes the Permanent Mission of Sweden. It includes WFP, FAO, CARE, Interaction, IRC, and Oxfam, as well as all of our guest speakers today. Uh, once again, apologies for all those who bore with some of the technical difficulties, but I believe that their points came out loud and clear for all of us. And again, once again, thank you all those who attended this this early morning session. Uh, again, we hope that these, uh, the points raised here, resonate throughout our considerations uh, throughout the humanitarian affairs segment. Once again, thank you so much, and we wish you a very good day.